Hello everybody, this is Pastor Joe from First Baptist Church of Vero Beach. It's a beautiful day here at Vero Beach and want to welcome you again to another tutorial on how to preach. We hope that uh, these short tutorials will give you some insight and some best practices and tips for either new clergy or ministry students who are looking forward to filling the pulpit or have an assignment for homiletics. This is our church's gift uh, to you to help you along the way. You may be wondering why you can't see my face. We made a decision when we started this tutorial series for you to focus primarily on the sacred space that is the pastor's desk rather than my face. I think we're all better served for that. This is our fourth tutorial and on this particular tutorial we want to talk about the first day in preparation of a sermon. If you go back to our third tutorial, I outline what an average week looks like when one is preparing a sermon for Sunday coming up. So I mentioned that there's a schedule. Monday is the day to read the scripture that you have planned to preach on, give it prayer and thought, and give consideration to uh, different ways that the Lord can speak to you and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in your preaching rather than having a preconceived notion and then going to the Bible and forcing the Bible to fit what you want to say rather than to hear from God. I also mentioned that my own particular schedule calls for reading commentaries on Wednesday night. In order to make this video, I abbreviated that. So what I did is uh, this today is I read my scripture lesson uh, that I had planned. In this particular case, this Sunday, we were preaching on Exodus 20, verses 18 through 26. And I spent some time in prayer, and rather than wait until Wednesday to read commentaries, I had a little bit of extra time today, so I read some commentaries today. And during my prayer, pulled out some resources in order to help guide you and show you how the process is. So basically, step one is I read the scripture lesson, as I mentioned, Exodus 20. That is this Sunday's text, as well as Exodus 34. But Exodus 20 is my main uh, scripture lesson read the verses, took some notes on some of the things I caught in that particular section. Like I was uh, very intrigued when the Israelites asked Moses to tell God, for God not to speak to them, but rather have Moses be a mediator between the people of Israel and God. And then it also makes a comment that Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. That really attracted my attention, it caught my attention, that God resides in this thick darkness. What does the Bible mean by that? And then, as part of my own thoughts on this scripture, uh, lent itself as far as reading the scripture several weeks ago when I was planning for this week's sermon, I wanted to figure out how to reconcile our fear of God, and in this particular text, the fear of the Israel, the fear that the Israelites had towards God, with our friendship in Jesus. Does the fear of God conflict or contradict the calling to be friends with Jesus where Jesus tells us in John that we are to be his friends? Or does the fear of God bolster our friendship with Jesus? This is really the main question and main contention that I have for this Sunday sermon. The main thing I want to wrestle with in scripture and with God and in my time with God in order to tried to pose that question to the congregation. So when I saw this idea of Moses entering a thick darkness, it really compelled me to think further about this idea of our fear of God, but then our friendship with God through the person of Jesus Christ. One of the things that I also thought of in my prayer time when I read the scripture lesson was the idea of what we mean by fear of God. I believe that there are true fears of God and false fears of God. To me, false fears of God are brought on by superstitions. Like we may be afraid, say, when our uh, grocery bill uh, is rung up to $66.60 or something. But then we treat God as an afterthought and really don't fear God in order to obey him and live for him. So our false fears really stem from superstition whereas the true fear of God should be driven by our not only recognition of God in our life, but also the idea that we are to be humble and to obey God in all things. So 
that is also playing a part in how I'm thinking about this text. Again, it's only Monday. I have another uh, three days until I have to write the scripture lesson, but these are the things I'll be thinking about during the week as I craft the sermon in my head. I did read through uh, some commentaries this week. I read through uh, the Classic Interpreter's Bible uh, commentary. It's the original 1960s uh, commentary uh, that uh, I started with this because I don't have too many commentaries on Exodus, so these are the one of the few that I have. And something in that really got me thinking about this idea of fear of God. And I think that's where I really came up with this idea of having a false fear and a true fear of God. I think it, it came from that particular commentary and the writing in that. That commentary also brought out a really interesting quote from the philosopher Kierkegaard, who once said that dread is the possibility of freedom. And Kierkegaard's point is that we start off in a place of dread, but that dread is to move us into conviction and then move us ultimately not to live in fear, but to live in the freedom that we find in Jesus Christ. I thought that was worth noting. I wrote it down on my little legal pad here, and it's something that I'll take with me as I pray about this. As I was praying about this text today, I also thought about the worship service. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to shape the worship service like we're shaping the sermon, which is ultimately a place of going from talking about the fear of the Lord to friendship in Jesus. So I called over to my, uh, our, music of mini our minister of music, our worship uh, minister, and I asked him to think about the congregational songs and the movement of worship where we start off in a place of awe and reverence of God's majesty and grandeur, this idea of a thick, that thick darkness in which God resides at the beginning of the service to move us eventually to a place of friendship with Jesus. And I mentioned to him I, that I think uh, starting off the service with a more haunting organ rendition of a song that I heard our worship associate play a few weeks ago would be really good to start off with. Then move into a reading, our time of welcome, and then start with these high church songs about God's majesty and then eventually uh, have a tipping point in the middle of the service where we light the acolyte candles on the communion table bringing light to the service, and then moving into more upbeat songs with friendship in Jesus. I think that movement might be very interesting. It might lend itself to the sermon, but also lend itself to the text where we have in the Old Testament this idea of God, of the people of God standing off at a distance, only to find that God joins us and draws near to us in the person of Jesus Christ as a result of Jesus' ministry. As I was thinking about these various things, uh, God brought to my mind that I read a book a while ago by Barbara Brown Taylor by the name of Learning to Walk in the Dark. It's a book I read about, I guess, two years ago. It's, it's, her, most, it's her most recently published book. It's a really good book. I love Barbara Brown Taylor, so I try to get all of her books. And as I was flipping through just a few minutes ago to find what I had read and what interested me, I realized that the second chapter is called The Fear of the Lord. And actually, in this particular chapter, it talks about Exodus 20, our text for this week. So as I read it, uh, I realized that I had some good source material here that I can use for the sermon, and that it would give me a good resource to uh, craft the sermon uh, in a way that that helps enlighten this text. I also, as I was reading it, caught a really interesting quote from uh, Greg Gregory of Nyssa that she quotes, in which she uh, quotes him as saying, Moses' vision uh, began with light. Afterwards, God spoke to him in a cloud, but when Moses rose higher and became more perfect, he saw God in the darkness. I thought that was really interesting. Barbara Brown Taylor writes in the same way Gregory said, those of us who wish to draw near to God should not be surprised when our vision goes cloudy, for this is a sign that we are approaching the opaque splendor of God. If we decide to keep going beyond the point where our eyes or minds are any help to us, we may finally arrive at the pinnacle of the spiritual journey toward God, which exists in complete and dazzling darkness. That's some good writing, but Barbara Brown Taylor is known for that. She also tells a very interesting story about walking off of a pier 
uh, in the middle of night. She was at the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and she walked off the end of a dock, fell 13 feet to um, the the dock that had come apart uh, during a storm, and uh, she did get hurt, but she draws some spiritual insights from that experience of walking off the, taking a long walk off of a short pier, to put it bluntly, which I think is really something that brings to my mind the idea of the fact that I think we're afraid to walk with God because we really do walk in the dark, meaning we like to control things, we like to be in control, we like to know what's going on, we like certainty and predictability, but anyone worth their salt who knows what it's like to walk with God knows that walking by faith is often one taken by uh, stepping out in the dark, journeying into the unknown, walking in very uncertain places, and in some cases not knowing what tomorrow might bring. For when we pray the Lord's Prayer, God tells us that God will provide our daily bread. There are very few times in the Bible where God assures us that we are to know what is to come tomorrow. Perhaps that's why we fear God in the wrong ways, is because we don't fear God for the sake of knowing God, but we fear God because we'd rather be in control, and so we turn from God in the end. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. This is, again, kind of the beginning of the week and a week-long process of getting uh, to know the scripture text in order to preach it on Sunday. If ever in South Florida, we'd love to have you visit us at First Baptist Church of Vera Beach. Come by, say hello, leave a comment below, subscribe to our channel, and uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this time. Have a blessed day.